Welcome back to Android Authority's Q&A. My name is Jace, and this is where we try and answer your most pressing Android questions. Just like when Vito Labito asks, what are the advantages of having a flexible phone? I don't get it, unless I was gonna have sex with it. Well, Vito Labito, an apt name by the way, Yes, you're right, for the moment is a bit of a gimmick, but why I get excited about it is because of the possibilities it brings for the future. You see, if a manufacturer can produce a flexible display or device, it opens the possibilities or begins to open the possibilities for things like computerized clothing, where your clothing is able to monitor your vital signs. And if I were to keel over and have a heart attack, for example, my clothes could notify an ambulance and have it come and retrieve me before even anyone else knows. That is amazing. And it also furthers the development of what's called the Internet of Things. And I've talked about this before. It is crazy exciting. The Internet of Things, in short, is the connecting of everything like your refrigerator, not just your phone and your car, the obvious things, but I mean everything. Your refrigerator could know when you're running out of milk and could automatically order new milk from Amazon, that kind of thing. But the Internet of Things is not exclusive to electronic devices. No, even animals are included. Yes, that's right. This kind of thing is actually happening as we speak. There are cows that have a biochip inserted into their shoulder that are able to send a message to the farmer when they are in heat via SMS text message. Yeah, I know, you're thinking, how would that actually work? Oh, 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 wait. Bull! That heifer over there wants your babies. Now go get her done. I beat you, no. Be Bull, beat you. Bull, oh, come on, come on, Bull! <sighs> Damn, that poor heifer. She'll never text me again. All right, guys, let's start off with the best 10-inch tablet. Tushar asks, what is the best 10-inch tablet if I need a laptop replacement? Should I get the current Nexus 10 or wait for the new version? Well, Tushar, there's no real indication yet about when the Nexus 10 would be released, but even if it was, I might not recommend that. I do suggest you look at two other tablets. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition, of course, has the S Pen, has a fantastic battery, and has a little bit better camera than most other tablets out there right now but it's also you know, probably the most expensive option. So you may want to consider the Asus Transformer Infinity Pad. It has the keyboard dock, which is getting fantastic reviews, and it has a great screen. It's really good for gaming. You had mentioned that. And it is also quite a bit cheaper. So the latter choice is the really best bang for your buck. Let me know which one you get in the comments below and enjoy your new tablet. Now, Mr. The Barney asks, why do developers still prioritize for iOS users when there are so many more Android users? Well, Mr. Labarney, that is a good question and a common one, and it comes down to money. You see, Apple was the first company to put out a app store and teach and condition users to pay for digital content, to pay for mobile applications. So they have over 200 million users that have credit cards on their iTunes accounts, and that is extremely valuable to Apple iOS users are much more likely to pay for digital uh, content, pay for apps, and they pay more on average than Android users. Now, Google is relatively late to the game, number one, and number two, they have more users because they have more entry-level mobile devices, cheaper phones, basically, in developing countries, in places where users are less likely to use a credit card online. Now, there is a basic solution to this, or a solution I've heard uh, recommended, and that is that Google should be in the business of selling Google Play cards in you know, every corner store and every kiosk around the planet, and that would allow those new users to you know, engage in the digital economy, uh, digital economy in the Play Store. I think it's a great idea. We'll see how it goes. Mayor298 asks, Hey Jace, I can't decide if I should buy the Galaxy Note 3 or the Sony Xperia Z1. Which one do you recommend? Well, Mayor 298, I would have to ask you what your priorities are. If you already have a tablet, you probably want something significantly smaller, so you might want to consider the Xperia, which has a better camera, and uh, the screen is fantastic. But if you don't have a tablet, go for what I think is the best tablet on the market today, that Samsung Galaxy Note 3. It has great video and camera capabilities, and of course has a battery that is 3,000 milliwatt hours. That is amazeballs. So consider those things and let me know which one you get. Good luck. 
All right, guys, so last up, I wanted to talk about some comments that were made in last week's show regarding the whole 64-bit processor versus a 32-bit processor. I know some of you were upset about the analogy I gave, saying it was not just oversimplified, it was just flat out wrong, because I was suggesting that a 64-bit processor would double the speed of device using a 32-bit processor. Okay, I didn't say it doubled the speed. I said there were it was close and there was other factors involved, but I don't want to argue about that. Uh, you're right. I should have clarified that the primary purpose of a, or primary benefit of a 64-bit processor is the fact that it can employ more RAM, and that's always a good thing. So I understand that. And uh, the second thing I wanted to clarify, and what I didn't know, and, and thank you to Mr. Um, uh, I was going to say Mr. Cyanogen Kills, it's not Cyanogen, Mr. Cyanide Kills. He made a great comment, and he did it as an adult. I thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that rooting a phone and flashing a custom ROM are two different steps. And the fact that rooting your phone, getting super access to your phone is completely safe. You, you run no risk of um, damaging your phone. But the act of flashing a custom ROM does carry with it some risk. So some people were you know, arguing about uh, you know, rooting is not dangerous and people say, yeah, I did and I bricked my phone four times. Um, so there is a distinction between those two things. Thank you, sir, for making that uh, uh, clarification. I appreciated it. Thanks guys for watching. If you found this helpful, kindly give us a like and subscribe. And if you have a question, please put them in the comments below. I will be sure to read it and perhaps you can be in next week's Q&A. Your wife is in heat. If she heard that, I'd give you to Josh for a drop test.